Hello everyone and welcome to another art lesson coming live from my home here. Um, I had some amazing responses from our first uh, round of art with Andy Warhol and doing pop art. So today we're going to kind of continue along with another elementary lesson for parents who are looking for resources to further their children's education from home. Um, today we are going to do a simple lesson on one of my favorites, uh, Eric Carl. Now, when you think of Eric Carle, I'm sure the first thing you think of is my son's favorite book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Um, and I'm sure if you go around your house, especially those of you with young children, you can think about all the books you have on your shelves. You can think about the books you've seen at the libraries. I'm sure at some point or another, you have read a book by Eric Carle. Um, I definitely have read this one. It's definitely starting to get worn by my 20 month old um, but let's go ahead and talk a little bit about who Eric Carle is. So Eric Carle is an American illustrator, author, and designer. And since 1969, when he put out uh, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, he has released more than 70 children's books, many of which he uh, wrote and all of which he illustrated. Uh, so his illustrations have become quite iconic. Uh, his use of bright colors, his use of patterned or textured paper that he does himself, uh, it's really, really neat. And so we're going to go ahead and play around with his style today. So we have Eric Carl. This is our focus for today. <clears throat> now, when it comes to creating his artwork, the key to it is um, using different papers or materials around the house and breaking down those papers um, and cutting them up into basic shapes. So if you look at the Very Hungry Caterpillar, um, if you notice, it's not just a solid green. Um, similar to this, if you notice the leaf, it's not just a solid uh, color. If you notice, it's very textured um, with different uh, ways to apply that. So we can kind of mimic some of these styles, and I'll talk a little bit today about how we're going to do that. Um, it could be done with paints. It could be done with food coloring. It could be done with whatever resources are really around the house for you. Uh, so today we're going to talk about how to mimic the style of creating textured paper if those resources are available to you. But what I want to show you before we jump into that is how you can just simply break up uh, his animals and his uh, characters, as well as some of your own favorite animals, into basic shapes and turn them into creatures. So what I wanted to show you right here, so this is one of my examples for today. Uh, this is an example I did recreating the Very Hungry Caterpillar. And if you notice, it's really just broken down into one repeating shape, and that's an oval. Uh, all of our young learners know the different shapes, squares, triangles, rectangles, circles, ovals, trapezoids, stars, and hearts, and crosses, and uh, pentagons, and hexagons, whatever shapes you guys can come up with. Well, use those as your foundation. Take a look at your favorite animal. Take a look at a complex animal, and at the end of the day, they can all be broken down to basic shapes. Um, they can be broken down to geometric shapes. Geometric shapes are shapes that kind of have a similar a uh, pattern, a circle's a circle no matter how many ways you make it. If you don't make it looking like a circle, it's not a circle. Or you can have organic shapes. Organic shapes are a little bit more free form that you kind of make on your own. But right now, what we're looking at is geometric shapes. We are looking at ovals. And we have repeated the ovals in various sizes um, to create the body of the very hungry caterpillar. So if you can see right here, we started with the oval that's red for the face continued alternating the light green and dark green. Um, and then ultimately to round out our hungry caterpillar, we finished out with the little eyes, which are just ovals within ovals. We're on the oval train here. Um, and then we have these cute little antennas, which if you flip them over, they almost look like a rain droplet. Perfect, Dan, I'm so glad you can draw ovals and you'll be great at this. Um, and then these little shapes right here, again, if I flip them over, they just look like little T's cut out. Um, not too challenging at all. So again, it's a really cool creation, quite simple, and it's just made of basic shapes, shapes that we all know how to make, shapes that we can all cut out of paper. The other example I want to show you also kind of takes the same concept. Um, now, this is not necessarily an Eric Carl character. This is just kind of my own creation, uh, but it's the same idea applied. So if you look right here, um, this cardinal is made out of a semicircle. So we just took a circle and cut it in half. I used a trapezoid for the tail, where one side's shorter than the other. Um, we've used kind of that raindrop shape for the wing, a triangle for the beak. Uh, we've cut out a nice organic shape to make the feet. 
We also have these little almond shapes for the leaves, the branch, and then the sun up here is made out of, again, basic shapes. Oh, I feel like that's too dark. There we go. Basic shapes. There we go. <laughs> basic shapes and triangles. So that's what you get when you're looking at when you're looking at these shapes here. So we'll kind of revisit these examples in a moment, but let's go ahead and talk about what we can use to create. So first and foremost, this lesson's all about working with paper as your medium. So go around the house, find some paper, and it could be printer paper, it could be sticky notes, it could be scrapbooking paper, it could be construction paper, it could be index cards. Look around, see what you have. I know right in here, off the bat, Got some paper and we can work with it whatever you have available to you um so i have an assortment of paper that i grabbed and at the very least um the paper you see here if all you have available to you is just the paper start cutting it up and let's create some animals let's start making some basic shapes and putting them together and see what we can come up with animal wise um if you want to take it a step further which some of you guys might like the additional challenge. Now, parents, this is a messier part, which is awesome and also terrifying at the same time. I know when we're working with home artists, but I absolutely love this lesson. I'm gonna quickly show you all how to marble paper. Um, now, I'm not gonna physically do the process, but I'm gonna show you the materials and I'll leave you guys with a link so that you can go ahead and try this at home. So the materials that you need to marble paper, let's start off with the final product. The final product looks something like this. Super cool, huh? Now this is made out of shaving cream and it's made out of food coloring and that's all you need. So let's take a look. So you're gonna grab a cookie sheet or any other material that you can go ahead and place the shaving cream in. Now I love using cookie sheets because they have the edges. So what's gonna happen is the shaving cream will fill the space and then the edges kind of catch the shaving cream so it doesn't really spill over. But you're gonna go ahead and grab shaving cream, whatever's available to you, and you're gonna go ahead and spray it. And you're going to create a nice, about quarter inch thick coat of shaving cream. Now, if you use what I have available to me, like a gel shaving cream, it still works. It comes out of gel and you need to kind of like work it a little bit and kind of swirl it around with your fingers to get it to actually take that like white shaving cream form. Uh, once you're done from there and you have the layer of shaving cream, you're then going to hunt down some food coloring. Now, if you're like me and you can only find whatever's in your mom's cabinet, um, I have red and blue available to me and that was more than enough to create all the different pieces that I created to marble my paper. So, with this, uh, food coloring, a few drops goes a long way. This is not necessarily about putting globs and globs on it. Literally, you can do just a couple of drops on it. I would say no more than five drops are necessary um, to really get the effect. You can always add a few more if that's something that works for you. Um, and then from there, you're going to take a toothpick and you are going to swirl the food color. And you can swirl it back and forth. You can kind of fan it out. Um, but the toothpick allows you to spread the food coloring. Um, and if you look, you can actually kind of see when I do all these where the toothpick lines went. You can see when they went back and forth and up and down. You can see when they kind of went more explosive. You can see where I swirled the marbling technique. But if you look at all of these, these are all just really cool final products um, that you get just different ways of approaching it. So shaving cream, food coloring, Swirl it up with a toothpick. The final step is you're gonna get a sheet of paper, flip it over, and lightly press down on the shaving cream. When you lift it back up very carefully, this side's gonna be a hot mess. It is going to be filled with shaving cream, and at that point, you're gonna go ahead and scrape it off. My recommendation for a scraping tool, I use just a plastic uh, paint scraper. Um, whatever you have available to you. You could use a plastic knife, you could use a piece of cardboard. I've used a variety of methods to scrape, but you're simply gonna scrape it off, put it right in the trash, make sure the trash can's nearby parents. This part is messy and it is food coloring. Um, but when it's done, it doesn't take too long to dry. We just laid them out to dry. Uh, and the cool thing is when you do one set, 
you can take whatever was left and do a second print and you can do a third print so you can get a variety of prints off of just one layer of shaving cream and food coloring which is what I did here and that's what gives you this really neat textured effect and these textured effects create a really cool foundation to build your animals off of and that is what I did with mine so if you look back here uh, we'll jump back to the Hungry Caterpillar. I did light green and dark green, and all this is is red and blue food coloring to get these final effects. And what I did here is I did two pieces of paper, and those two pieces of paper I was able to then cut up. You can kind of see from my scraps here, I kind of cut them up and made different shapes. There's little pieces left. Um, if you have many children at home, if you have a couple of brothers and sisters that maybe each want to take turns making different colors of paper, what you're able to do then is you can create a nice arsenal of a variety of piece of a variety of colors, a variety of pieces of paper, and then those papers can be used to create your final products. So just to recap, I have a link and I have a video of me doing this um, from a newscast I did a couple of years ago. Um, so you guys can kind of see this in action. So if you want to see me doing this in action, the first minute of the bright winter link um, that I will post shows me doing this technique. Um, I also am going to include a DIY website so that you can give that a shot. And then when you're done, like I said, try to make those basic shapes. Try to break your animals down to basic shapes, and you can get some really cool final products. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this, please let me know. Um, included for you guys today, I'm including um, the links to marbling paper. I'm also including two links to read alouds. I have The Very Hungry Caterpillar and also Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? Another book that Eric Carle illustrated. Um, and then finally, I'm sending you all to the Eric Carle website. It's uh, eric-carle.com. Um, it will be included in our comments below. Uh, the Eric Carle website has amazing facts about Eric Carle himself. It also has uh, activities and resources. One that I encourage you guys to look at is if you go to his resources tab, there's a whole thing that says downloads and activities. So if you want supplemental learning and supplemental activities, there's um, activities that Eric Carl has come up with, fun painting activities, there's worksheets. So you can really take your learning of Eric Carl and extend it beyond what I'm offering you guys. But again, uh, just so you can see, this is who it is, Eric Carl, amazing American illustrator, designer, and author. And I hope you guys have fun with this one. I love seeing pictures of you guys at work. Um, I've been getting some amazing DMs of families who have actually been doing this from home, and that makes me so happy. So keep creating, stay safe, make good choices. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. And good luck. Happy creating.